I can still, I can still, I can still almost smell the, the the gymnasium and have people cheering and all that. It was a great feeling. This is how Ohio Northern senior Darren Scott felt when he became the national wrestling champ in 1987. But something would happen to this national champ that would change his life forever. In 1992, Darren started noticing muscle weakness and his legs cramped easily. It wasn't until two years later that a complete diagnosis would be found. Darren had a fatal nerve condition that another famous person also had. Darren had Lou Gehrig's disease. It is a uh, degenerative nerve disease. What, what it does, it starts in the brain. It's the chemicals in the brain that uh, dictate uh, some of your, your, motor, your, your motor neuron activity. And something goes wrong with the chemicals where they uh, miss the, the communication and the nerves break down. And so this is the result is when the nerves break down, the muscles break down. And right now I just have it in my lower legs and in my, uh, and in my hands. At first, Darren was angry at God for the illness. Darren's wife, Lynn, remembers. Before we got married, we had um, a lot of other things that were very traumatic. Just before we got married, my father was killed in a car accident. And then we were married three months later, and then three months after that, my grandmother died. And so it was more like, what else is going to happen? You know, it was, and then it was about six months later that he started to have problems, and it just seemed like what more could go wrong. But Darren says slowly, Jesus revealed himself in ways he had never known before. If, if the worst case scenario was I die, I had the best case scenario. And as I, I'll go to heaven and I'll, I'll meet Jesus Christ. I've always known him, and, I always knew, and I've always prayed, and I've always uh, read the Bible, and, and I knew I was getting close to the Lord. But I never dreamed I'd be this close to him after this. I thought I'd, I'd be further away from him, but this has made us closer. And Lynn believes her faith grew as she watched Darren change. They decided to buy a country home in Alger and take it one day at a time. Darren does have um, a love of life that is endearing, and it helps me because I'm, I'm not, I, I like to say I'm not a pessimist, but I'm very laid back and more of a realist. <laughs> and, um, and being able to see someone who just really embraces life like he does um, really helps me out a lot. And a lot of people really like Darren. Um, he's a likable kind of person. And so seeing him be able to um, be a representative of what God can do and how that can sustain him really makes me feel good. And I'm, I'm really proud of him. Darren, you're someone who obviously has not been made bitter by this whole ordeal. What would you say to someone to encourage them who might be suffering at this time? It isn't a matter of convenience. It's a matter of he is with me every, every step of the way. He's with me when I'm sleeping. He's with me when I'm eating. He's with me when I'm playing. He's with me when I'm crying. He's with me when I'm on vacation. Uh, it seems like, like I got, you have to get your, your eyes off the problem and your eyes on God. Because he's saying, I'm here. I'm here to help you. I'm here. I knew what's going to happen to you years ago. When you were born, I knew this would happen. I knew this. Uh, I can help you. I'm not going to leave you. If the doctors can't help, this can help, I'm there with you. I'm right, I'm right by you. I, 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 don't be afraid, I'm here. And I feel that. I feel that. I, that's something that you don't have to pray about because you know that he's there. And for Darren Scott, now he knows the way to be a true champion. For Turning Point, I'm Michelle Redmond. Now joining us here in the studio is Darren. Thanks for stopping by and telling us more about what's going on in your life. And uh, we want to talk a little bit more about what you have because I think everybody's heard of Lou Gehrig's disease. But it's a disease that there isn't a whole lot of information about still or a cure for at this time. Right. It's a... Uh it's part of what they call an orphan disease. Orphan disease, orphan diseases are a particular uh, handful of diseases that aren't really being researched very, very heavily, or they're just starting to be researched. Uh, what they call funding, or or uh, a lack of uh, uh, research interest. And ALS is part of that. It's a progressive nerve disease. Mm -hmm. But it's something that, uh, as the story showed, you haven't let it get you down. In fact, it's drawn you closer to the Lord. And um, I want to 
wanted to talk and let people know we didn't mention it completely in the story, but you are still involved in wrestling, but from the coaching end. Mm -hmm. What kind of kids are you helping out today? Well, uh, wrestling season uh, it uh, starts off in September when the kids uh, go to Ohio Northern University as freshmen, and that's when I want to start with them. Uh, wrestling is a you have to be mentally tough to put up with the rigorous uh, sport of wrestling. It just puts you through a grind, and it really can stress you out. And for me, God has always been uh, a part of my a, a part of my training. I've always been in touch with the Lord, and it'd be very helpful to the kids if they too could tap into that resource and it would make them uh, stronger athletes and better people for it. You and I were talking about how people may not know just how sports, the, the spiritual aspects and parts of it and how it can be a ministry and especially the kids see you, they knew you were a champ mm -hmm. in 87, they see you with your cane and so forth. How do you use that to encourage them and, and give them strength? Well, first of all, athletics is, uh, even for a non-Christian, there is a part of athletics that's very emotional. Athletics, uh, it parallels life. It parallels everybody's life. Everyone at one time feels like they've been the boxer who's been knocked out, or they feel like they've been the quarterback who's been sacked. And, uh, but as an athlete, um, there is a, a, a very strong emotional side to the sport, to all sports, and that is competing. And... Uh, it is, it is obvious to some, to some young people that because of the mania and the emotion of a sport that they do need uh, something else but their own power to pull them through. And uh, I can show them that, hey, I've, I'm an athlete who's, who's been sacked. I'm the quarterback who's been sacked. I'm the wrestler who, who in, in fact, has been in trouble with this, yet I'm still going on. Although I'm not running, I'm still running. I'm still pushing forward. And despite any discouragements, they need to push forward. And they need to learn from the bad experiences and keep going towards uh, the goal. Mm -hmm. And since you've come down, you know, Lou Gehrig's, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about how in the beginning you didn't want to be pushing toward that goal. Right. You know, but now Christ has just kind of rejuvenated you and come into your life in a, a fresh, inspiring way. And does that spill over to the kids? Yes, it does. I, I guess I like showing it in my attitude. Um, I don't, I'm not the kind of coach that screams up and down if they, if they make a mistake. Uh, I like to show them that Christ lives through me and I have, to, I have to lead by example. And I, like I was telling you before, I'm not so interested in batting a home run with the kids. I'm, I'm more interested in, in having very subtle ways. Of, uh, of, of, by the way, I, I have got to act as a coach and the things I put up with as far as uh, team attitude that, uh, that Christ lives through me and I am, I am there for them. And uh, like I said, at, at the beginning, I wasn't happy about this. I was very discouraged, very angry at God. And it, it takes a while to, uh, it took me a while to get back on my feet. But what I wanted to do is be encouraged. So it takes a second to be discouraged and another second to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And um, I know it's something that in your family, they've just seen a, a change in you. Lynn was saying she's just encouraged by you and your positive attitude and so forth. What would you say to people that, you know, you were in a spotlight, a limelight, a national champion. People spend their whole life working toward a goal and so forth, and you achieve that. Then you hear something devastating. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone to just encourage them at this time? who might have been in that spotlight or had that marriage or mm -hmm. had something that they had really worked toward and now they seem like their, their life is falling apart. What would you say to encourage them? Well, get back up. You have to get, it's easier said than done to say get back up, but the most important thing is, is remember what brought you to that limelight. Remember what strength brought you to that limelight. Remember what you're holding on to that kept you moving while you were healthy. And that is to, uh, remember God's promise, I'll, I'm, I'll will always be with you, I will show you the way, and to get back up and hold on to that, that shred of strength and keep moving forward. And remember what, what brought them there. Well, Darren, I want to thank you for your positive attitude and your love for the Lord and just stopping by today. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, Michelle. We'll be right back in just a few minutes.
Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Darren. And w what an encouragement, because when you look at the, the encouragement, you can see the, the heart of a champion in that. Mm -hmm. And that same heart can be in all of us if we're tr right. trusting in Jesus Christ. And we're going to um, really share more uh, about how we can all have that same kind of 